guys, what's up? Sherry here from No Fuck Skin Crew. Sherry here from the Fix Kevin Who. How's it going? So this is a basically a continuation or an update uh, for the reading I just did two year, two days ago. Um, so this will be from December the seventh until the fifteenth. Um, so this is a divine masculine or yang reading. But I want to try and do something a little differently here. I've got five decks, and I want to do a crystal ball. But instead of questioning, you know, instead of looking at it from the perspective of how the masculine is viewing the connection, the union, the feminine, that kind of thing, what are the en energies surrounding the masculine, um, just hold on a minute, that's so funny. So the page of wands just jumped out. So this is communication, great communication, and this is a spiritual journey. It's an adventure, embarking on an adventure. Um, and so what I was trying to say earlier is that I want to switch perspectives. I want to ask the masculine um, a few questions as a collective and hopefully they can answer it for me in the reading. And the thing is, I want to know how the collective masculine are feeling about being awakened out of the matrix. You know, this whole awakening, transcendence thing. Um, there seems to be a lot of question as to, you know, whether or not the masculine is further awake um, on the journey or the feminine, vice versa, that kind of thing, right? And it's like, usually it's the reverse. Usually, you know, what's being represented is that the feminine wakes first and um, she helps the masculine wake up. But the past couple of readings, there has been a shift and it feels to me like, you know, the mal or the feminine aren't as awake as they want you know, they think they are, and that maybe it is the masculine who awakens first. And, you know, they're waiting for the feminine basically to catch up to them. They're in a space of uh, surrender and acceptance, right? And they're waiting, you know, they're um, surrendering to destiny, basically. Right? They've learned their karmic lessons. Um, so, yeah. And I'll do the same thing for the feminine as well. I don't know if ma that made any sense to you at all, but I'm hoping that the cards will um, shed some light on what I'm trying to, to say. Okay, so I think I'm going to use a rider, the Rider Wake decks for the first four rows of the crystal ball. So there's a distant past, recent past, present, um, near future, and final outcome row. So for the final outcome row, I'm going to use the Osho Zen. So I'm going to use a Rider Waite for the first four rows. I was going to go Rider Waite all the way, but I think Osho Zen um, always has some wonderful messages or conclusions, that kind of thing. So let's begin. So we're starting with the um, Terra Illuminati. So I think I'm going to pull the cards and then we'll go through the position. So um, one row at a time though. Okay, so distant pass, four cornerstone cards which hold the major energy or weight of the reading and then one center card which is the main message of the universe. All right, let's pull them. Okay, so I don't read reversals on these. So three of cups. The page of cups. The Ten of Cups, wow. The Queen of Swords, 
and the five of wands interesting okay so the three of cups is an ignition switch right it's the first cornerstone card so this is uh, people coming together celebrating life celebrating each other um, you know people falling in love creating that energy of love and celebrating it feeling like they're part of something a community so there was this activation union coming together okay and then there was communication of love there was a desire to connect whoa whoa okay on a spiritual level okay is what I wanted to say with this because this is usually like a spiritual awakening uh, this is the muse card so this shows me that the, the, the masculine fell in love with the feminine right away there was so much love bubbling up within him and he desired to connect with her on a, a heart level um, and communicate that love you know so this is desiring a new loving connection and he saw that there was this happily ever after he had this vision in his mind you know it's basically that same woman grown and here they are in union and celebrating you know the kids are running around and dancing and they're happy right there's so much celebration so much love peace harmony the ten of cups is um, you know that happily ever after but then we get the queen of swords so the Queen of Swords is somebody, is the Ice Queen, somebody who is, has cutting words, who can, you know, she thinks more with her mind than she does with her emotions. Uh, so this is usually somebody who is widowed or has been hurt in the past, divorced. Um, so they see through bullshit, they have cutting words, they say what's on their mind. Um, so she uses that sword to deliver truth. Uh, so it's a communication card. So I see here that the masculine are saying that the feminine detached on some level from her emotions or said some things <clears throat> uh, that might have hurt the masculine. But he, he still views her as a queen, as this majesty to be respected right so there's the five of wands which is conflict def defeat or no sorry it's not conflict it's um it's challenges obstacles um you know competition right so maybe there is this feeling of lack feeling that you know he doesn't measure up or he can't provide what he would would like or that there you know, there's too much, um, too many challenges or, yeah, you know, maybe he's noticed other people flirting with her, desiring her, or, you know, just competition. So it is a major cornerstone card. Okay, so I'm actually going to pull a card from my deck as a clarifier, but I do see what you know, Spirit is trying to say that, you know, the masculine really fell in love with the feminine. Um, and he could have been the ice queen cutting off communication, ghosting the feminine, right? Because there was this fear of lack, you know, no confidence, um, not enough strength to fight for her or provide that happily ever after that she's always desired okay so I think that spirit is really leaving the question of consciousness for the Osho Zen um, so that's just the feeling I'm getting but right now the masculine seems to be focused on you know this dream this desire this deep loving connection you know with, with the feminine Okay, so what do you mean by the Five of Wands? A star card. 
this is hope this is healing after a difficult time so even though there is conflict um, he still had hope for the future he still held on to this idea of the happily ever after um, he kept it in his heart and it helped him heal anytime he thought of the feminine in the past um, he healed and it fed you know it fed, gave him life um, gave him optimism so this is wish granted right it's like my wishes came true but things came in you know got in the way challenges got in the way and I, I lost sight okay um, one card also for the Queen of Swords please the Eight of Wands okay so the Eight of Wands is communication right so it's it's confirmation that there was some communication cutting words disconnect right this card is Cupid's arrows it's more of an uplifting energy very um, very swift very sudden um, it's accelerated motion but mainly I think spirit is trying to say that there was communication there was love there but um, the feminine may have closed herself off at some level um, for fear of being hurt or because the masculine cut off contact with her she became cold okay so next row we are going to use uh, what is this the witch's tarot I think okay so this is going to be the recent past position So the Nine of Cups, the Six of Wands, the Queen of No Fucks Given, wow, the High Priestess, and the Ace of Wands. Okay, so the Nine of Cups is satisfaction, it is uh, wishes coming true, dreams fulfilled, it is feeling emotionally fulfilled it is feeling like you've attained um, this level of happiness you're not quite at the nine of cups but you know look at that look of contentment on her face um, so it's in feeling satisfied with yourself um, being surrounded by friends and family right so there's more celebration energy here so then Six of Wands is success and victory. You're the rock star. People are cheering you on. And notice how the energy, there's a masculine moving towards this person who feels so content and satisfied with herself. Right? There, you know, this is a uh, fire, uh, spirit, um, creativity, enthusiasm, passion. So the masculine felt guided are drawn towards her um, there's this feeling of success surrounding her you know this love um, moving towards love and the Queen of Wands the Queen of No Fucks Given uh, so this is a fire energy passion we got three wands here okay so I'm really feeling all the feminine is, you know, the yin energy and the masculine is the masculine, obviously, but, um, you know, the Queen of Wands is very charismatic, very beautiful, center of attention, the leader. Uh, you know, there's a lot of sexual energy here as well. Um, you know, this is a, the male symbol right are supposed to represent sexuality uh, so it's like they share this sexual you know magnetism they're drawn 
or he's drawn to her. You know, there's a really, uh, you know, she's the sun, right? And it's like, like attracts like. Again, there's this, this um, law of attraction kind of energy there. Okay, so the high priestess, someone who's very intuitive, sees beneath the surface of things. Um, you know, so the high priestess is like a goddess. She's ruled by the moon, right? She, um, she sees symbols, synchronicities. Uh, she's able to see the code of the universe, basically, and translate it. But really, she uses her intuition to guide her. So, you know, we see her as this very passionate, very desirable um, spiritual woman um, who is highly intuitive, right? But, and there's this um, otherworldly, ethereal level that's being brought in here. This is spirituality. The connection began as love. And isn't that right? You know, it's like the... The heart is the motor that drives spirituality, right? You can see that awakening, right? And you see a first sign of, of wands here with the five, uh, which actually grows into the six. Okay, so we can see the masculine expanding. He's finding his confidence. He's finding his strength, his courage. He's feeling accomplished. Right, and it's because the feminine is in this space of self-love, feels like she's attained um, all that she's ever desired, right? She can stand on her own. Um, she doesn't need the masculine to feel emotionally fulfilled. So, you know, I'm seeing, seeing that also with the Queen of Wands, who, um, who tracks the masculine to her. Women want to be her, and men want to be with her, right? And so, and same thing with the uh, high priestess. She's a goddess. She's um, unattainable, really. There's this veil of, of um, mystery and secrecy that she, you know, she kind of hides behind, right? You know, she has that look in her face like, I know... <clears throat> I have all the answers. And, you know, it's like if you look here, we got that Queen of Swords who will also cut through illusion. She sees the truth. She speaks her truth. So the way that the masculine sees the feminine is, you know, um, again, very queenly, uh, very powerful. So the Ace of Wands is a new beginning. Uh, it is an aha moment, go time, go light. It's a thrust forward, right? So there's a sense that there's this build up and movement. Okay, so I see this as a gift from the universe. Um, you've both been given the wand from the universe uh, and there's a sense of movement with the masculine who is on a spiritual journey right and the feminine has attained a certain level of spiritual illumination very powerful for sure in comparison to the six of wands so the Ace of Wands is a gift from the universe, a new start, right? And you're getting a go light. And it's driven by intuition and this deep spiritual knowing. Okay, so now we're moving into the present moment. So this is the Allershot deck. I want to make sure it's upright. That's incredible synchronicities, guys. Right? It's all about love and spirit but we have that one little hiccup there of
being detached and then lashing out almost, you know what I mean? Which caused the masculine to feel belittled or no, because there is growth there from the six or from the five of wands to the six of wands. Um, okay, well, let's carry on anyway. So the present moment, oops, the ace of wands again. Wow, that's crazy. Because there is uh, a timeline running from past to future. So this would be the recent past, and this is the energy being brought into the present. So here, you know, it's just the ace of wands sitting in the grass, right? The little butterfly um, sense of transformation. You found your wings. And here, there's masculine hands reaching out to take the wand. Next is a death card. Seven of Wands, wow. Progression, five, six, seven. And oh, so, sorry, this is a zero point energy. So, this is the main message from the universe. The Four of Pentacles and the Five of Wands again. Wow. Get in there. So, it's the same card right here. All right, so the present position, the Ace of Wands, that go light, go time, Kundalini awakening. But it, now it looks like the masculine is reaching out to take that wand. Very cool synchronicity. And he's actually holding that wand in a defensive pose. Right, so there's six wands coming at him, and he, he's holding that wand in his hand. Uh, so the death card is metamorphosis transformation right the butterfly rises from the chrysalis and takes flight and so this is also death of the ego death of your old identity so it's it's things being cut away washed away clearing the old to make room for the new so there is a rebirth here major major transformation that results from taking that wand, taking that offer. So the seven of wands in zero point. So this is defensiveness, um, holding your ground, standing your ground. So again, there is growth in the spiritual realm. He's graduated to the seven of wands. Um, but there's a sense that there's too much information coming at him at once. Um, that he knows his truth. He knows this is a card of confidence, right? Knowing your, your core values and beliefs and standing up for yourself, not backing down. So he is fighting, or he not only has he successfully overcome that competition, but now he is standing on that hill. He feels accomplished, right? But there's still this kind of standoffish energy. Now, he could be holding off or just, I mean, you know what, I just really find that he's trying to find his confidence, his strength, his courage. So the Four of Pentacles is somebody who is closed off, holding on too tightly, not letting somebody in. So this is the first Pentacle card, which is Earth, 3D reality, material possessions, the physical plane. So this is an insecure energy and an unwillingness to let go or let in okay so here we have that defensive net energy the you know a hoarding kind of energy and then the five of wands resurfaces again so what i see here is that this transformation triggered him to become defensiveness and there may be chaos happening in the present moment um, it's like he's trying to gather what he has um, trying to defend what he has 
trying to overcome those obstacles, those people coming at them, fighting, at, you know, it's, uh, the same group of people that he's have been challenging him in the past are still there in his environment and there's a sense that he has gained a bit of stability but he he's afraid of loss he's afraid of losing um, the things he's worked for in the 3d okay so this energy is being shed away with the death card and it's because of the ace of wands okay so the masculine knows that she is his soulmate his true love that's all he thinks about he feels he feels successful he feels like he's on the right path he can feel her in his heart he he thinks about this new beginning all the time right and he's constantly being sent signs and synchronicities um, but there is a transformation that he's moving through he's releasing himself from um, people that are trying to hold him back okay so now we are moving on to the near future position so this is the guilted right away chariot awesome ten of swords right below the death card incredible three of swords nice the page of wands that's beautiful and the knight of pentacles okay so we got two cards of movement um the chariot is taking control of your life and directing your energy towards your goal. It's right below the Ace of Wands, right? So he's looked to the past and he's seen how this connection has made him happy. You know, this is another triumphant, successful card. Uh, this is, but really, it's taking control of your, your life, overcoming obstacles, challenges that are stopping you right and so um, this is such a very powerful confident card it is bulldozing over you know anybody who's in your way anybody who's challenging you right look at the look on his face there's focus control uh, no one's stopping me okay and so it's like he's running Okay, so this card is uh, an emotional card, right? It's water, so it's pursuing things that make you happy. His goal is going to bring him that Nine of Cups energy, that Ten of Cups, right? The Four of Wands. Um, so the Ten of Swords is feeling betrayed, feeling stabbed in the back and left for dead. So it is a dark night of the soul. The Ten does mean that cycle has ended. Okay, so it's like that final sword, that final stab in the back, that final betrayal has, you know, just, he's done. He's done with it, right? Look at the look on his face where he's, he's horrified how these people have hurt him who continue to betray him who take him for granted, who use him. Um, you know, he's beginning to see that. He's beginning to see how, uh, you know, he's been living in a dark, depressive state. He's, you know, he's not able to truly feel love, right? And that's what he desires. That's what he keeps drawing him back to the feminine. All right, so crazy synchronicity there and then here he is he literally jumps back up fuck that I want a new life I have visions I have you know these dreams these ideas um, creative inspiration right I want to go on an adventure I want to begin anew right picking himself back up 
So he's, he's looking at that energy and no more. I'm not going to put myself through that anymore. I'm taking control, overcoming, finding my confidence. Right? He no longer has to defend himself. He's standing there proud. He's not quite the king of, of, of wands yet. Um, but there's this strength and confidence that is growing within him. And it's a spiritual strength. And he went from being closed off to opening up. Okay, so then we have the Knight of Pentacles. So this is movement forward, very slow movement, right? It looks like he's just standing there, but in fact he is, you know, taking one step at a time. So this is commitment to a long-term goal. This, this uh, Knight always arrives at his destination. Okay, so this is a very long journey as well. It's taken him a long time to get to the point that he's at, right? So it is taking what he has, um, investing that pinnacle in a new future, right? And there's a sense that he wants to offer this gift possibly to the feminine, but there's this new life that he is beginning that he's moving towards, right? At first, you know, there's this, you know, what I'm seeing really strongly with this card is that decision very suddenly to get the fuck out of whatever it is that's hurting him this badly, right? And he's bulldozing over that, right? And getting back up, brushing off the dirt, feeling proud of himself, turning around, moving towards the future, away from this pain and not looking back, right? He's facing forward. Okay, so the Osho Zen is going to be the final row to the final outcome. So again, there's going to be two cornerstone cards. And um, I'm not likely to read all the cards. We'll see. I'm called to. But I definitely want to read a couple of them. Okay, the first cornerstone card. <laughs> nice! The King of Wands. There we have it. There he is. Wow! 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 The synchronicities here are incredible. So this is the creator he becomes the creator, the Zen master. Beautiful. <laughs> you can't plan this shit, guys. Wow. Right? And he's holding that Ace of Wands. Right? Go like That is the go like, go time. He jumps on that chariot. Becomes the King of Wands as a cornerstone card. It's because he wants love in his life. Okay, next. Nice! The Lover's Card. Beautiful. So this is a very strong Twin Flame card or Soulmate card. Seeing your reflection, your mirror. Right? And so um, the one thing that dist distinguishes um, a Soulmate or Twin Flame connection from that of a regular karmic relationship is that when you look at this person, they're basically you, but in a male form or female form. You know, twins tend to look alike, they act alike, they have the same values and beliefs, um, and there's a sense of this connection between the two of them over a lifetime. The bond is unlike anything you've ever experienced before because you are looking into your own soul, your two halves of the same soul. I mean, that is absolutely fucking amazing. Wow. Thank you, Divine Masculine. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to pull the next card. The Eight of Swords. Guilt. Thoughts. Um... Yeah, it's being pulled back into 
the mental into the 3D reality, into heartbreak, pain, right? Seeing the obstacle standing in, in your way again. Um, being pulled between Zen and... Uh, yeah, just <laughs> fear, right? Okay, next. Nice, the King of Pentacles. Beautiful. So this is a man who's completely balanced within himself. We got two kings here. Isn't that amazing, guys? Holy cow. I'm finding the more people that view these readings, the more people that like, that comment, um, brings in this you know, stronger connection with source, the messages are getting it's stronger and stronger. And that could just be the vibration of, of the planet. But I feel that, um, yeah, it's just this, this wholeness that is coming through. So this is a balanced male. That's what I'm trying to say. He's a king of pentacles, the king of earth. Um, and he's moving from this closed off, holding on to every penny, um, being a miser to just being open and free, sharing to all. All right, and so final card, nice rebirth. Oh, this is so perfect, perfect. So it is the same card, the Ten of Swords up here. So he's being reborn. Oh my God, that's amazing. Okay. Um, oh my God, I, I almost want to read them all. Where's my book? You know, I'm going to pause and I'm going to look at all the descriptions and see if I can see a deeper story here, right? But spirit or the masculine pulled through. They, they showed their struggle. They showed their journey. They, they showed how they feel about the feminine, how the feminine has been such a healing energy for him. And you know, a very intricate part of his conscious um, evolution. So, wow. Um, yeah, okay, so let me pause it there. I'm going to find the book and look at the cards. All right. Okay, um, I started to read it, and then I was like, no, I don't want to read everything twice, so let's just do this spontaneous the way I always do. All right, so I got um, the creator here, so I will read I'm being guided to read. Okay, so definitely I see this um, metamorphosis out of the mind into this state of pure innocence again. Okay, so the Zen master. The Zen master in this card has harnessed the energy of fire and is able to use it for creation rather than destruction. Very nice. Okay, so that shows again that evolution of man, right? Um, that, conf that, you know, in the past, um, man, um, you know, it, it's all about war and destruction and fighting and conquering um, to this, you know, Zen energy, right? Just peace, being a creator. So he invites us to recognize and participate with him in understanding that belongs to those who have mastered the fire of passion without repressing them or allowing them to get to or uh, allowing them to get destructive and out of balance he is so integrated that there is no longer any difference between who he is inside and who he is in the world out, outside he offers a gift of understanding and integration to all those who come to him the gift of creative light that comes from him from the center of his being. Um, the king of fire tells us that anything, anything that we undertake now with the understanding that comes from maturity will bring enri um, enrichment to our lives and to the lives of others using whatever skills we have, whatever you have learned from your own life experience. It is time to express yourself. So that's beautiful moving into Zen moving into peace right and creativity 
All right, so the lover's card is Major Arcana. Okay, so these three things are to be taken note of. The lowest love is sex. It is physical. And the highest refinement of love is compassion. Sex is below love. Compassion is above love. Love is exactly in the middle. Very few people know what love is. 99% of people, unfortunately, think sexuality is love. It is not. Sexuality is very animal. It certainly has the potential of growing into love, but it is not actual love, only potential. If you become aware and alert, meditative, then sex can be transformed into love. And if your meditativeness becomes total, absolute, love can be transformed into compassion. Sex is the seed. Love is the flower. Compassion is the fragrance. Buddha has defined compassion as love plus meditation. When your love is not just a desire for the other, when your love is not only a need, when your love is sharing, when your love is not that of a beggar but an emperor, when your love is not asking for something in return but is ready only to give, to give for the sheer joy of giving, then add meditation to it and the pure fragrance is released. That is compassion. Compassion is the highest phenomenon. Bam. So it is that love that was initiated, right, with that princess of cups. And it caused a transformation within him. You know, there's this desire, that sexual attraction um, and desire to be with the feminine, which actually caused a sense of um, self-confidence, right? Lack of self-confidence. And so there is that internal struggle within himself um, that he is releasing, right? He's releasing his attachments to the 3D reality, um, to his body image. He's releasing the pain in his heart, the betrayal, from the past, the things that are stopping him, things that are blocking him. And he's moving into a space of oneness within himself. And through that, he's able to love, truly love, not because he wants something from somebody else, right? It's giving somebody their space. It's, it's allowing them to grow on their own. Um, and feeling true love within within their heart for the first time, right? Um, okay, so guilt, which is the Eight of Swords. So that's, normally that's a self-imposed prison of the mind. Um, feeling trapped by thoughts. Okay, so it says, this moment, this here now, is forgotten when you start thinking in terms of achieving something. When the achieving mind arises, you lose contact with the paradise you are in. This was one of the most liberating approaches. It liberates you right now. Forget all about sin and forget all about saintliness. <clears throat> Both are stupid. Both together have destroyed all of joys of humanity. The sinner is feeling guilty, hence his joy is lost. How can you enjoy life if you're continuously feeling guilty? If you're continuously going to church to confess that you have done this wrong and that wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong. Your whole life seems to be made of sins. How can you live joyously? It becomes impossible to delight in life. You become heavy, loaded. Guilt sits on your chest like a rock. It crushes you. It does not allow you to dance. How can you dance? How can you? How can guilt dance? How can guilt sing? How can guilt love? How can guilt live? So, the one who thinks he is doing something wrong is guilty, burdened, dead before death, has already entered into the grave. Wow. Wow. Right. And so that's below the three of swords. There, it's like. 
he's fighting his emotions, he's fighting his feelings. How can I be happy? Right? How I don't deserve to be happy. Right? It's fighting with those thoughts in your mind, that guilt, those gnawing thoughts. Okay, so the King of Pentacles, abundance. And I actually read this, uh, I think, last week. I can't remember, but... Um, okay, so in the East, people have condemned the body, condemned matter, called matter illusory. Maya, it does not really exist. It only appears to exist. It is made of the same stuff as dreams are made of. They denied the world, and that is the re reason for the East remaining poor, sick, and, and starvation. Half of humanity has been accepting the inner world but denying the outer world. The other half of huma humanity has been accepting the material world and denying the inner world. Both are half, and no man who is half can be content contented. <clears throat> you have to be whole, rich in the body, rich in science, rich in meditation, rich in consciousness. Only a whole person is a holy person, according to me. I want Zorba and Buddha to meet together. Zorba alone is hollow. His dance has not an eternal significance. It is momentary pleasure. Soon he will be tired of it, unless you have inexhaustible sources available to you from the cosmos itself. Unless you become existential, you cannot become whole. This is my contribution to humanity, the whole person. So, whole person. That <clears throat> is what he is hoping to attain, what he will attain. No guilt, no fear, no pressure, right? No stories of the past, letting it all go. And, you know, there's this beautiful rainbow channeled energy that opens up after that cloudiness right clawing at his mind fear and guilt um, and it's like there's this beautiful blanket of flowers um, that is washing it away or clearing it away and basically it turns into this beautiful lush garden beautiful okay so final card cornerstone card um, and again, it is a repeated card of the Ten of Swords, right? And so it is from the death, the Ten of Swords, into the Lover's card that we're seeing there. Um, okay, so Ten of Swords. And I absolutely love this card. Rebirth. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this card depicts the evolution of consciousness as it is described by Frederick Nietzsche in, in his book, Thus Spake Zarathustra. He speaks of three levels of camel, lion, and child. The camel is sleepy, dull, self-satisfied. He lives in delusion, thinking he's a mountain peak, but really he is so concerned with others' opinions that, it's hardly, that he hardly has any energy for of his own. And you can see that so concerned about other people's opinions, you know, and holding on to things, you know, and, and kind of delusional on a level, right? It's like these, these thoughts, not seeing things, just um, playing out unconscious behavior. So emerging from the camel is the lion. When we realize we've been missing life, we start saying no to the demands of others. We move out of the crowd, alone and proud, roaring in, in our truth. And, okay, yeah, he's moving out of the crowd, right? Um, standing his ground, movement out of the crowd. <clears throat> Sorry. And, and standing in his truth. Right, and there's so much grounded energy in this knowing there. Um, okay, so, but this is not the end. 
Finally, the child emerges, neither acquiescent or, nor rebellious, but innocent and spontaneous and true to his own being. Whatever the space you're in right now, sleepy and depressed or roaring and rebellious, be aware that it will evolve into something new if you allow it. It is time of growth and change. Nice. So really, this is showing the, that the masculine, you know, right now he's that roaring lion, right? He's realizing uh, the truth, right? He's awakening to the truth. And he's coming into a very loving, peaceful, whole state. And this is happening on a, <clears throat> on a global scale, right? That is the ultimate level of attainment is this return to innocence, to purity. Um, no more fighting, no more battling, no more betrayal, right? Living in peace and harmony. You can have what you want. All right, so I'm going to pull one card from Miss and Mermaids, and I will read that to you. Whoa. Okay, so this one then, I guess, Stranded. Um, wow, I think the masculine just got that card, right, in the reading I just did. Oh, my God, I gotta pause it again. Hold on a minute. Okay, so... 38. For the solitary seafarer, the time has come to weep, longing, empty, yearning for his dreams dreamt dark and deep. Forlornly lamenting, she aches to close the gap she keeps, remembering a loved one as she's drifting off to sleep. Right, remembering a loved one. Did I lose a card? What the heck? Oh, yeah, that's right. All right, these dreams, these ideas, remembering the feminine. Slipping into nothing, an oaken gnarled embrace, listlessly awaiting the sun's illustrious face, the sun. Alone on an island, swiftly shrinking space, she is stranded alone, afraid, and in disgrace. So, alone on an island, right? And then shrinking. Alone and stuck in a gnarled tree on a deserted island, a melancholy mermaid stares into the distance. Oblivious to the sunset rising behind her, she is pale and lost in a reverie. She is isolated and lonely, but why? message is to stop isolating yourself. You may feel deserted, but it is self-imposed isolation. What you see as rejection is all in your mind. Others are not avoiding you. You are avoiding them preemptively by preventing them from rejecting you. Right? Leads to heartache. Perfect. It is not healthy to avoid relationships and interactions for fear of losing a loved one or becoming embarrassed. It is time to step off the island you have created for yourself and join the rest of society. Join the rest of society. Make contact with a friend you have been avoiding. Go back to classes and meetings you have bowed out of and wisely invest in new modes of communication so you can talk once again to the world. The world is waiting for you. It is up to you to take the first step. Yes. It is up to you to take that first step. Begin that new adventure. Take that wand. Right? Hold it proudly and, you know, hopefully. <laughs> And this is what will become, right? You will move into this beautiful space of self-love and balance, right? So stop isolating yourself. It is the masculine who fears, uh, you know, this deep, deep pain. And I can understand that, right? Um, but it's time to stop being the victim. No more. All right, so... Um, please do leave a comment. Like I said before, it feels like the more people 
are interactive. It's like spirit knows you guys are listening, and so they start to show off a little bit. They um, show a lot more synchronicities and signs, and the energy just seems to be building, right? So I know you guys know exactly what I mean. You guys can see the synchronicities as well. Very powerful. Okay, so I thank you guys for joining me on this journey. I, I absolutely love you guys. All right, peace.